the Udo, a planned development united. Installed their neighborhood nodes throughout the entirety of a planned. Their reach was unmatched. Hello everybody and welcome to UDU team meeting number 25. Today is the 28th of September in most places. Um, again, a lot to talk about. Um, first of all, as we said last week and we keep saying we're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts and YouTube, we did just, well, I did talk last week about potentially putting all of the old uploads up on the channels for the podcast channels. Um, I've decided not to go ahead with putting legacy uploads on there. Um, I think we can always point people to the YouTube channel if they want to catch up on the past history. Um, I had a look into it and it was just going to clutter up the feed and kind of overcomplicate things. So we'll just skip that one entirely. Uh, move straight into the T1 market floors. A lot of action. In San Francisco, we were at 19K. Now through the week, that did jump up. It was up over 20K. Um, I made a couple of sales at almost 21K. But as you'll see with all of these other cities that I'll discuss, it's all come crashing back down as people scramble for liquidity for all these new city releases. So, um, yeah, it was up near 21K, but it's down to 19. And there are there are several popping up here around the 17, 18K mark. And I have seen some really low, like 14, as people just really scrambling. Uh, Manhattan did get up to 45K at one point. Um, that's down to about 42K. Chicago was at 4.5K. Um, it's kind of jumped up here, there, and all over the place through the week, but again, has dropped down. It's about 4.4 at the moment, so it's losing ground as well. And Santa Clara's taken the biggest hit that I could see. It was at, it was pretty steady at 16K. Um, it's kind of jumped around to 16, and then it goes up to 19, and it's back to 17. But I did have a look before, and there is some there as well that are at that 14, 13, 15K mark. So, um, there will be some bargains as people scramble to get liquid for these new cities. So there's always opportunities now. I know Mortries is usually pretty good at keeping an eye out and taking advantage of those things. Um, we'll go straight into the trains. Round four trains. Walk you there. I have to unmute it. I'm around. Uh, yeah, the Bok wagon has uh, reached the final destination. So it's, it's completed. We had 10 properties on the nomination list and uh, or the development list and they are completed right now. And what I would like to suggest is that, you know, if you have the spark back, which you should have, stake it into the, the apartment train and then we can reach uh, that final destination and go to the fifth one. Nice, sounds good. More cheese, how are we going with the apartment train? Well, we have about four more to go. We are almost filled with the fourth to last one. We need 10 more spark on that apartment building. Then we have another apartment building. And then after that, it's smooth sailing because we have a townhouse and then a small townhouse. So once we get this going, we should be done. I'm not going to say by this weekend, but by next meeting. Mm -hmm. Cool. That'd and then be we good can action. discuss then the next train specifics. Yeah, we kind of have been hinting that there's some big changes on the way. Um, yeah, that's exciting definitely. changes. Yes. Well, that's good. Um, so we're nearly nearly wrapped up. Yeah. Nice, nice. Um, straight into the wine of the week. Uh, last week I talked about the Upland Cafe as the win of the week. This week, I'm going to talk about it as the wine of the week. Um, I have jumped in a few times here and there through the week. Um, as I've said, um, while I'm doing the dishes or whatever, I'll, I'll have a listen. There's been a lot of shit talk. Um, it's kind of almost become an echo chamber of bullshit from what I've been listening to. Um, unless there's somebody like Uplando who's in there to steer it in the right direction. Every time I've caught him in there, he's, he's done a good job, but 
yeah, some of the just absolute nonsense I've heard in there recently has been interesting to say the least. So, yeah, I don't know what to think about that. I'll keep it short this week. Um, the win of the week will will be the Spark rental for MTU. I have gone ahead and I've secured a full twenty Spark, so I'm able to I'm able to complete townhouses at the maximum rate, which I think what is it five days or something like that. So should be really cranking those out with my little team of Spark renters. And yeah, we blitz through that section. Um, Kansas and Rutherford. How did everybody go there? Uh, I hated it. I mean, I got a couple of truce and I made a little of money, but I didn't, <clears throat> it wasn't fun. It wasn't Chicago fun. So I think I might be like, hold, like, Holding back a bit. I'm I'm knees deep in uh, Burger King and McDonald deals, <laughs> which is right up my alley. That's what I do. I collect those. If you if you don't want yours and you have a good deal, like you know, send me a message. I'm all for it. But um, yeah, if it's not a tier one, I'm not going to really go for it as as hard as I tried to the first three attempts in Kansas. It was just too much of a kerfuffle. Yeah, well, that, that's been your long-term play for a while, hasn't it? Getting those McDonald's and Burger Kings and sitting on them and see what will eventuate further down the track. Yeah, I mean, it could, it could like, turn into just no, a nothing burger, but at least I'll have a burger. <laughs> well, you got to have a gamble on a few things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's weird. This That seems like they've almost given up on the tier system have they they haven't even released what tier have they officially released what tier kansas and rutherford were or what new orleans and nashville are going to be i think it's just all community speculation isn't it 1.5s or twos or yeah yeah they're being a lot a lot more secretive now they used to even kind of give the prices at one point and now they they won't even do that so it's like no bones to be thrown to us. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a strange one, which makes it hard to work out if we're going to run for a node play because you don't know what the FSA coverage is going to be and all that sort of thing. So, a bit annoying. Yeah. Huh. Um, Human Sim has run a pretty good mini node situation in Kansas. Um, if you're not sure about what that is, reach out to Human Sim and ask him for some details. Um, I'm involved over there. It's what they're planning there is pretty cool. So, yeah, if you want to get involved, check that out. Um, I believe there are a few other kind of node and mini node situations popping off, especially with some of those um, small, those smaller neighbourhoods in Kansas. I had a few people reach out asking me if I wanted to be involved, but I'm just not stretching my apex out too thinly. I did get involved in what was it called, the lake something or other. What was that one? Lake Wakakanda, I think. Wakakanda, yeah. Yeah. You and Houston it. Lake went really quick. That was actually, I had more fun uh, minting Houston Lake than I did the three attempts at, uh, <laughs> before that. Uh, yeah. So th there are a few plays out there. Um, there's a few groups have made, you know, they've extended their node coverage and that sort of thing. So if you want to get involved in Kansas, yeah, ask around. I'm sure somebody can point you in the right direction. Um, I haven't heard about anything in Rutherford because it's just two big cities, unless there's some kind of street node action going on. I'm not sure. Um, speaking of new nodes, uh, we did start off our node stacking thing in the UDU server, where we asked people if they wanted to get involved in the next big neighborhood node push that we are hopefully gonna go for. Um, I just had a look before, we've had 26 members pledge 10.7 million. And of that, we potentially have 4.3 million sitting in the bank. So we're almost 50% of the way. Yeah, if we if we can put 10 million together, that's going to smash a, a node out pretty quick if we're all coordinated and on board. Um, again, it's just going to come down to that FSA drama. That can be uh, that can be a black hole for upex and drama as 
you know, if you want to know about FSA drama, talk to Arblando about the school situation. Like, I think he's only just finished clearing out his FSAs now. So that's why we're kind of holding off for that tier one, because if you go in, if you go in for a node in one of these tier two cities or something like that, it's just the amount of FSA is just really overcomplicates things. One way to kind of deal with that is to just go ahead and mint what you can and then don't engage the FSAs at all. Once there's a bit of chatter out and about, people will naturally just pick those up and flip them. So it can be a case of just sitting out the market and being patient and waiting for those flips to come online. But um, that could be a bit risky depending on how many there are because we know there are there are some bigger players who love to take advantage of node flips and everybody's got a bag of FSA agents under their belt pretty much if you're at that kind of stage of progress in the game. Um, so, yeah, the Blue Dragon, we always talk about chasing the Blue Dragon. Um, we have a, the Blue Dragon soon to be landing on New Orleans. Who's chasing it? Yeah, 100%. I think it's always worth to chase it, a new yeah. city. What are you going for, Bok? Anything in particular? You got, you're hoping for vanilla or you're hoping for collections and going for that? Or what's the plan? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, just waiting for the Upland Gods, what they, what they are saying, basically. But the preparation time is really short. I mean, I think that like the last city release, there was not much time to look at properties that look nice. I was also, when we... We we're talking about the previous release. Maybe I have another question for you guys. Do you actually um, look at properties near the stadiums? Because I mean that could also be a tactic. But I just I, I only went for collection properties and really tried to flip them fast. Don't know how you think about that kind of strategy. Yeah, it makes sense. We know people are selling those for crazy money, but um, personally, no, I haven't. I've been interested in that at all. Um, what's Bogdansky saying? There's no lines showing for New Orleans yet. Really? Oh, that's interesting because I have had um, I've had some people reach out to ask um, some other big groups looking at securing a node and asking like which nodes we were going to go for, which areas, so that we didn't you know mix each other up. So I assumed that the the map was already there, but I guess they just know the area. But yeah, the old blue dragon. I'm. I think this might be the first city release where I don't even bother getting up. I think I'm just going to sleep right through and see what happens when I wake up in the morning. If there's still something to grab, I might just grab my three. Um, I am going to sit down today and really go through and crunch my numbers because you know, I'm not putting any more money into this game and I'm just working with my dividends. And I've already, like I said, I'm renting 20 Spark. Um, I've got a few other projects that I need to clean up and finish minting or buying a few people out of. I think I'm getting to the point where I'm going to have to start watching the watching the wallet to uh, make sure I don't overextend myself, so to speak. So, yeah, for me, I think I'm going to be sitting this one out. I've talked about it for a while. I've said, yeah, I'm going to sit it out eventually. I think this might be the this might be the one. So, I don't know. Anybody else going all in? I know Upland. I was keen on New Orleans. I'm gonna go have some fun. See what you can get. But I also am now. I'm weary after that. I saved up a lot for this last release, and it went sideways. And and it didn't go sideways because everything got gobbled up just due to the technical errors. And and they drug drug it out over three days or four days or whatever it was. Like so now, I think I, my expectations will be much lower. So as well the amount of upex I, I plan to bring to the table. Nice. So yeah, we you're almost a jaded veteran now. You've been yeah. <laughs> you've been through, you've been through a war. Um, what are some of the lessons you think you've learned that will help you in this one? Uh, well, as you've been teaching me since day one here in in, in the UDU is patience, right? Uh, that really plays a big part into it, and, and and I'm glad I was a little bit more patient. I didn't blow all my my reserve on on the last release, so now I'm actually kind of prepared to go into this next one. Um, and then just patience in in the the technical aspect or, or the limitations of, of Upland right now with regards to, you know, trying to mint several times and having, you know, co congratulations. And then all of a sudden, you know, you get the error message. So did I get it? Did I not get it? That kind of 
you know, that, that was frustrating. So I'm, I'm prepared this time. I'm going for Duval Street. I love drinking. <laughs> that, that's, that's a fun drinking place. So it's got to be worse than my picks. Nice. Yeah. Um, some people have said New Orleans is a big target that they they have a lot of interest in because of personal reasons, so they've got to go for it. Well, you know, I, of course, I know something about New Orleans, but personally, I've got no attachment whatsoever to it. It's just going to be blue, more blue squares. So, yeah. How about you, Mortise? You're very quiet over there. What's your plan aside from the uh, Maccas and Burger King? I can't. I can't, I have no idea about New Orleans either. All I know is it's a big tourist trap where people go and there's vomit on every corner of every street and it's dirty and it's murky and there's a lot of bugs. And I wouldn't, I probably would never go there in person. <laughs> so I don't, I would pro I'll probably go there in game though, just in case like they do mess up like I know they didn't you know do right by us for the Kansas City mess ups but the FOMO will always bring me there just to, just in case sort of thing and uh I mean if I get a few I get a few if I don't know skin off my back yeah I think um skin blanket <laughs> yeah I think Scooby was talking about that on the icon podcast um, not this last one, the one before, where it's worth going to the city even if you don't do anything, just in case they do throw you that, you know, it might be a block explorer or whatever. So we'll see yeah. what happens. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll do the same. Before I go to bed, I'll send to the city. And But, yeah, I'm, I'm not getting up at 1 o'clock in the morning just to deal with that crap all over again. So we'll see how we go. Um, main topic. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Bob. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I actually hope that it will be non-vanilla for me because I have a flipping strategy. So I just try to like flip everything until a international city or a tier one city comes up. But I mean, imagine when it is vanilla mode, how long will it take before the collections are known? And, and um, you know, from the pre previous Cleveland release, I did not really want to sell anything because you have a chance that you own something great. So then your money is still sitting there. But it's a lot easier when you are actually able to mint like two, three, four exclusives and just flip them so you can have extra money. So I, yeah, I don't know. It's, it also depends a bit on your strategy and on your liquidity. It's, it's a fair point. I mean, if, if they go with a vanilla release, it, you can see it both ways. It, it could kill the secondary market, but then again, we've seen that before with Cleveland, it can make the secondary market come alive because people are, buying where they think might be a good spot um but yeah you're in a different kind of situation with where you, where you are at, as far as progression in the game so you're still looking for flips to make that up so if, yeah for players like yourself it definitely the non-vanilla releases with all the collections is is what is ideal for you so i made such a killing with the carnegies in cleveland i must have made over two million Upix with that and um i i if if the new city is a vanilla then my whole strategy changes and i'm all in oh wow huh. yeah it can definitely go both ways it's just one of those tricky ones to to judge um we know it's the end of the month and they always like to fatten up their books by the end of the month. So I'm expecting it's not going to be vanilla, but we shall see. All right. The main point that I wanted to talk about this week was node progression. Um, we've had a situation where players such as Steve or Human and a few others where they're in the UDUA, they're clearly ready to move up to the UDU, but they don't have the, the node properties that allow them to do that because we know if you want to be in the, the UDU proper, you need to have at least one set of NDNs, the neighborhood development nodes. Um, it's kind of made that, that job a little bit harder as we've seen some of the other nodes drop off. So it's quite a, it's quite a big roadblock at the moment. So I was talking to Steve a little bit and a few other people about how we can address this. And it kind of all, almost goes right back to, like um, 
like we discussed last week in the history of the UDU. It goes back to those uh, community node properties. When we're in that expansionist phase, we were doing community nodes and telling people, you know, we're not really sure what, what we're going to do with these, but if you want to get involved, grab some of these. Um, at some point, we need to address that. And I think this node progression situation might be a way to do that. Um, I am going to put it out there that I will buy back, I will personally buy back any non-collection community node properties at 125, uh, 120% of mint. Um, you know, we've seen that previously where we've done situations like the spark, the, fa the first failed spark train where, you know, I offered to rectify that situation. The same things here. Um, if you're listening and you've bought into those community nodes and you're not really happy about holding on to them or whatever, reach out to, to me and I'll, I'll fix those up. Um, but the caveat is I'll fix those up if you're going to use those funds to buy into one of our mini nodes or one of our full neighbourhood nodes. Um, does anybody, rather me blab on, does anybody want to, or does anybody know, what, what's the difference between our mini nodes and neighbourhood nodes? Anybody want to speak to that? How about you, Coy? You're a new member. What do you think? I'd be interested to get your perspective, whether you understand what the difference is. Um, yeah, so my understanding from, from reading the, the UDU documents uh, on Discord and kind of watching these videos is the kind of like what you said, the, the main node is a, is a main node that's under current development, meaning uh, the spark trains are, are working in those areas. Um, obviously, MTU is, is, is the first. And, and, and you had mentioned in several, several meetings now that uh, the next will be maybe towards LMU because of uh, what happened with uh, and Venom. And then because you definitely have to have whoever the main node manager is, has to, has to be actively engaged because it is quite a commitment, time, money, um, organization, communication. And, and in order to pull it off, it, you know, it benefits all members. Um, and, so it, it takes a lot of work. So hence those, the, the mini nodes or, or the up and coming ones, you know, are, are just that it's, it's areas uh, that are prospective uh, options in the future, right? So I guess, you know, um, was it Longwood Drive? Is that, or, you know, some of those, Almond Park, you know, those are, like you said, those are very reasonably priced. Anybody could have gotten in on any of those at that price versus trying to get into MTU or LMU. Uh, I personally took a, did that myself with more cheeses node, MCU, um, or, you know, potential node in the future. Uh, I bought minting that for that reason, because that was an option. It wasn't, you know, it, it was, it's a long play. That's what this game's about. That's, I, don't, I don't know how accurate that is, but that's my understanding as a newer player. Yeah, you, you're pretty well bang on in several points there. Um, there's a few points to clarify does did anybody pick up on those and want to speak to those how about you dub are you available yeah yeah i can do that one so um the ndn the, the neighborhood development nodes they're a whole a whole neighborhood and we're trying to get uh, i can't remember what the exact percentage is is it 70 percent, 71 percent, or something but it's basically 61 but yeah. but it's for a whole neighborhood and it's to get you know that percentage control of a whole neighborhood uh, whereas the mini nodes, they are just like a couple of streets or a street, or I think we've got one, haven't we? But it's a very long street that actually goes through several neighborhoods. And you're not trying to get, you know, like a, a 61 percentage of that whole neighborhood. You're just trying to get a certain couple of streets or, or wherever you put your boundaries. Yeah, that, that pretty much covers it. Um, yeah, the, the full neighborhood development nodes there's often a, a big it's a big price difference you know we've seen like myself with mtu or podex with lmu um the the amount of time and money that it takes to secure those is is huge like to secure a full neighborhood and then raise the market floor that's it's it's a massive commitment and yeah you're right fish it does take a lot of management to work that out on the, the back end 
Um, whereas mini nodes are kind of areas that we go into and it's usually predominantly only minting um, and then maybe a few wrapped up on the secondary market and that sort of thing. And the full neighbourhood development nodes, those are pushing for that uh, the neighbourhood collection status. Now, there has been some talk about streets potentially achieving like a development collection status as well. Um, I don't think I've seen anything from the team in that regards. I think it's a lot of chatter within the community. So I don't know how accurate that is. Um, if it is the case, like we'll definitely be able to make S Longwood Drive uh, our collection because I forget, I ran the numbers recently and by the time I buy it, there's one more player there that I'm working through to buy it. It'll be, I think we're at over 80% ownership of that. So that sort of thing. So yeah, there is quite a, and quite a big difference between the full neighbourhood nodes and the mini nodes. Um, but we need some progression through the system to help members who can't get involved in the neighbourhood nodes, but want to be in the UDU. Now, as we said previously, you had to have three neighbourhood development nodes to get that final step for UDU membership. So what I've been thinking is kind of a, uh, staggered system where we know we have community nodes we've got mini nodes and we've got the neighborhood development nodes to be able to kind of upscale those almost um, i'm thinking that potentially through well, when i looked at the market data if, if you look at it three community node properties um, those are almost equivalent to one of our mini node properties and then if you look at the rates again, three mini node properties are almost one NDN property. So it's, it's not perfect. It's not a perfect system because, you know, there is a big difference between um, the, floor pro the floor price in Lone Mountain compared to Midtown Terrace. So there is quite a substantial difference there. But if we have somebody like Steve or Human and they have nine mini node properties well then we can potentially say okay so three mini node properties is equal to one neighborhood property we've got nine of them so you get the green light for to upgrade if that makes any sense at all yeah i'm getting a few nods so yeah um and of course there has to be a commitment to holding on to those and building them and all of the regular stuff so I think that might be a way where we can get those people over the hurdle. Um, we know we are going to push for new nodes in the future and it's going to alleviate that situation because like if we push for a new tier one full neighborhood development node and you're already in the team and you don't get involved, well, there's no real excuse that you that you haven't been able to secure three, three properties only. So, but yeah, just in the interim, I think that might be a good stopgap. And it, yeah, as I said, it kind of helps address that um, the last of the legacy promises, which was the community, community node situation. So it, it kind of puts a pathway in to address that as well. So I'll, I'll endeavor to type that out a bit more clearly because I kind of, once I start waffling on, I tend to confuse myself as well, but yeah. In loose terms, three community node properties might equal one mini node property, three mini node properties might equal one full NDN property. Uh, we shall see. We'll see how that plays out. But yeah, I'm um, hopefully hopefully that'll help push um, at least Steve and Human over the edge and they can upgrade. Um, cheese, are you there to give us an update on the wine and cheese, including the very cool Colossimo NFT that you put together? Um, <clears throat> I sent over the NFT to you if you want to share that. Uh, we're going to be recording tonight if we're still on for that. I have a guest lined up. And um, oh, we got into Frazzle's online in. We have a, a nice channel there, which is pretty cool. So if you're not in the online in, I suggest you go for it. Ask me if you need an invite. I give away some free stuff there to get people excited. So yeah, just hit me up. I'm just trying to 
load up my did you send it to my atomic hub yes yeah. All right, my computer's just having a meltdown here go away let me share screen and I'll pull it up. It's very cool. I was laughing my ass off at four o'clock in the morning when I saw it. Oh, that's not there. Where are we? Over here. See that? I'm on computer. I don't know. I'm getting the spinning wheel again. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's hilarious. I like the original yeah. version with the big, long, hairy balls dropping down. But yeah, yeah I, I, I might get flagged for that. Your thing isn't moving. Doesn't it? Uh, yeah. Like I said, my computer's having a moment. So we got the back of an old back of a man in his trench coat, Colosimo, and he's doing the flash thing, and um, the wine and cheese artwork of my head and more cheese's heart are gasping in surprise. Um, God only knows what he's got under that thing. Only you know. You two know. <laughs> well, I, I did see the early work in progress. So, yeah, I, I do know, unfortunately. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, how do people get hold of one of these mochis? Um, you gave instructions. We can't say anything. Mm -hmm. I know, like, maybe there's a lot of people so far i'm actually giving them out right now one two three four five six so far i have to go check to see if anybody else got it but so far i got six of them so and is, i guess four more nice. are available yeah so as we always say there are very clear instructions in the videos on how you can get yourself one of these um are there any are there any leftover NFT claims from our interview with Little and Cody with Human. Um, Lil, we still have that one. Nice. Yeah. Um, and Cody, uh, la, 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 la. maybe we have still three. There you go. Cool. Sounds good. And yeah, we're recording a bit later today. That'll go up on the weekend and I'm trying to put together another plan for a kind of cross collaboration one that, that we'll do for episode number five, which will be really cool if that pans out. So we'll see how we go. Um, as, uh, yeah, last week I talked about trying to put together some kind of UDU, a short UDU info video. I did go ahead and put that together after a lot of failed attempts and I sent it off to More Cheese for review and got the big red X and she was dead right. Um, I tend to, as it's probably painfully obvious if you're listening to these things, I tend to come across as very deadpan, factual, going back to my um, science days. Um, I, I'm not a razzle-dazzle hype man at all. So... It's probably not what we want for a almost promotional video. So I thank you for your feedback. Um, yeah, I kind of knew it when I recorded it and it was just a case of letting me know. Um, I did reach out to Bokyo to at Morchi's suggestion to get his take on things because, as we know, we've seen Bok is super cool at putting presentations and that sort of stuff together. Um, he gave me a lot of good notes that I kind of looked through. But then... I got to thinking that instead of me doing it and coming up with the thing, what about if I put it out to you guys and girls? Um, I have put together a kind of dis, a mini disclaimer thing that will go at the start of the wine and cheese show recordings. Um, I think something like that, a short, say, max of 15 seconds, some little brief thing almost a disclaimer, almost a promo thing that will go at the start of the UDU videos before the theme song, the intro theme song kicks in. Um, I'm going to put that up for this week's challenge and I'll put a 50,000 Upex prize on that. So if you can come up with some short blurb that will go at the start of the videos, um, pass that on. And we have, I have put uh, Dub on the spot this morning to see we might commission him to record those in, what what do you call it, more cheese, his fancy voice? Yeah. So, yes, we'll see how... Mr. Fancy Voice. There you go. <laughs> so, are you up for that, Dub? 
Um, if yeah, we yeah. Get those. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm well up for that. No worries. Cool. So that's the challenge. Come up with the 15 second max blurb. So you don't need to record it yourself. You can just put it in text, but make sure that when you, you you're going to have to do some trial runs um, to make sure you're not going over time. I'm sure dubs can speak pretty fast. So see how you go. Um, it's just going to be some kind of blurb that says who we are, what we're about, and how people can find out more and get involved. So it's got to cover those things, you know. What is the UDU? What are we all about? How do they get involved? So put your thinking caps on and see what you can come up with. 50,000 UPEX. We're Udu. We're amazing. We don't want you. You want us. Done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's quite cool, actually. <laughs> There you go. Do you think you can <laughs> handle the knives and the flying dingoes and stuff like that? Where's my wand? Yes. Yeah. yeah, we have seen some some new members clear vetting this week, which was cool. We have also seen somebody fail vetting, which is kind of not cool, but it shows that our our vetting process is working, which is good to see. And for the person that did fail vetting, like I said, don't take it to heart too much because um. As I've said on several occasions, if I if I subjected my full um, blockchain and community post history to vetting, I wouldn't pass either. So, you know, there are always opportunities for second chances and that sort of thing. But sometimes when there's shit kicking off in the community, you need to kind of space that out a bit. Um, yeah, it comes back to. If you're going to be involved in the UDU, just be aware that you kind of are representing something larger than yourself. Um, it gets back to that that shit talk I was referring to in the, the wine of the week in the Upland Cafe. Um, there has been some shit talk in the Upland Cafe about what the UDU is, um, the failed promises and all that sort of stuff. Look, we, we addressed that last week. We haven't been shy to say that how we come out of the gate was it was a hype machine. There was no substance to it. Um, you know, I feel like we've addressed that, but it's going to take time for that to trickle through, through the community. And the only way we clear that is to just keep doing what we're doing and progressing forward and being positive and that sort of thing. Um, I think, I think people just like chaos and they just like something to complain about. It's like a natural human thing from wannabe alphas oh i this is something that's in competition with me so i have to kind of complain about it where where like here's yeah. a tissue wipe your eyes <laughs> yeah and, <laughs> and some of the people that are doing the biggest um finger pointing and laughing ha have a look into their own history and they've achieved nothing they've got failed projects and ignored projects you know all over the place it is hard to keep a group together like we've seen um i think might have been Bok posted something before. One of the other groups has there's some fracturing occurring there, and I, I think I said in the chat, all of the groups will go through what we've been through at some stage as far as internal conflicts and blah 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 and drama and whatnot. Um, it's just inevitable because, like you say, more cheese. That's it's human nature almost. And you know, you've got you've got a combination of personalities involved, um, and now real world money and that sort of things. Um, <clears throat> it's always going to kick off but as we've said from the very first team meeting as embarrassing as the very first first couple of team meetings were to look back on now there were still some solid um foundations being laid there as far as you know respectful communication and the only way this is going to work is you know if we stick together as a team and deal with <laughs> deal with things that come up you know respectfully and whatnot um <laughs> I don't know what giggle you're referring to, but yeah, it's hard. It's it's not easy, especially you know. No, when it's not. When you gotta have a team that's willing to kind of listen to the stuff they don't want to listen to and say the stuff they don't want to say, and then be okay the next day. Yeah, 100%. sort of thing. Because like, no, everybody's not gonna have a great day every day. Yeah. And uh, you just have to be ready to accept that or hope that the other person accepts it from you. Yeah, absolutely. But as we've seen with some of the previous situations, there is a line and once you cross it, there's no going back. So, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, don't freaking 
curse anybody out like that's just total disrespect man yeah. like you can have a disagreement and and just go back and forth but once you get to that point it's just like a marriage or you know a family like once you get to that point then it's hard to come back like i mean i'm not saying you can't but it's just really hard and it's not going to be equal ground because the person that did that is always going to be kind of beneath you sort of thing so yeah i just pick your words wisely and we're all adults here don't don't hurt your your true friends like that that's yeah, that's tricky um on to other things uh fish did you want to speak to world tourism week and the tools that are going on there um i haven't got involved oh. i did i did <laughs> register i did register because the, the team <laughs> said that if you'd already done the tours you don't have to do them again and you'll get the block explorer and i'm like that's what you say but i don't know if that's going to happen but anyway i, I know you got involved. a bit of a whinge nice how about it fish? <laughs> He likes winges. <laughs> we, we did talk about it briefly before the before we press record. So maybe just a quick synopsis of Good your experience. <laughs> so I'll give you my brief synopsis. If you would like the longer version, you could go to our Discord channel. <laughs> I did a, a quick vent, quick vent, but I feel better now. Um, yeah, so I participated. Uh, this is uh, I, as been said um they might promise things so in this case they've always said from the get-go they've said hey you register it was two thousand upx to register um they did one in san francisco today's was in manhattan um but you will get your upx back uh so i actually did i ran the numbers last time it seemed like something was off but i didn't really pay attention today i paid attention and even with not going directly to the property, um, I guess for those of you maybe that are new or, or watching this video that haven't done this, uh, basically what happens is you have to go to a city that's having a tour. Um, you pay, to, I think normally it's 2,000 UPEX and it's a tour and, it, and it's in the collections area. And you'll see that on in your little bar, navigator bar. And it'll give you a, a little write-up. This one was about comic books and kind of the history of comic books and how it relates to New York City. Uh, or I'm sorry, to Manhattan. And anyway, long story short, you go to these different addresses, you read a little bit about what happened in that address, and, and you collect UPEX. Uh, and they say that you're supposed to collect, that you'll get your money back. Well, I, I did the math, and I didn't, and, and each time you go between these properties, you have to send your, your block explorer to the next property. Um, well, you, and you can actually, instead of going to that property, if you, if you want to kind of game it and maybe make a little extra upix or, or not lose as much upix, I should say, uh, you can go to the one next to it if it's only 20 upix versus the person, a lot of these people, you know, know that their property is in it and they max it out. So even with doing that, I still lost like 500 upix or 400 and something upix because I did the numbers this time. And then that doesn't include the fact that I had to go from San Francisco to Manhattan and then Manhattan back to San Francisco for the for tomorrow's. So that alone was 5,000 UPEX or, or more than 5,000 UPEX. So I was a little peeved in the fact that um, this this one is a, is a week-long tour, right? Oh, this is a big week-long tour. But they're reusing tours they've done in the past. These are already designed. Like it, all they're doing is, is regurgitating ones. And I, like I said, I'll, I'll give you the short version. <laughs> but... It, but the short version is um, you don't even get those old block explorers, which I think, I, I don't know if I was talking to Bach or, or Teddy Pig or somebody, but it wouldn't be fair, right? If they did that two years ago or, or however long ago, and they had this kind of rare block explorer from the very first tour they did, that if they then gave it out again, right? They yeah, shouldn't. That would be a good look. Yeah. So they created two new ones for this. If you haven't checked, check it out on, on, on Upex, but it's basically a passport because it's world tour week. And, uh, and a fanny bag. Well, there was also some other discussion about whether a fanny bag's even worth it, but I guess more cheese really wants a fanny bag. That started a whole nother discussion. But in the end of the day, it's fun. I'm having fun, losing some upics doing it, but uh, um, but it is fun thing to participate in the community, so. Yeah, it's um, previously, they've kind of, it's almost been justified that, yeah, you don't make your money back, really. However, you get a block explorer that you can sell sometime soon in the future. So, 
if you were doing those tours individually, you come away with, what is it, five or six block explorers. So, yeah, you can see that the right. value was there. But with this one, you're doing all of that work, all of that moving for one block explorer. So I'm not Over sure. 20,000 in airplane fees. Yeah. And the, the community is so much larger now than it was when those tours come online. So you're potentially going to see heaps of those fanny packs, which um, – <laughs> Fanny is one of those thongs and thong things. Like I, I wear my thongs when I'm out in the garden. Now to, to the North Americans, you're going to be horrified at that thought, but thongs is what we call flip-flops. So fanny is the front end. So if you say your fanny pack, look at you, like, what the? Yeah. It's a pack that lays on your fanny. <laughs> yeah, but you call fanny your bottom, right? Isn't, doesn't that yeah. refer to your bottom? Yeah, fanny is the yeah, front end. You, you, you clip it. It's behind you and it lays on your bottom. Yeah. It lays but, on your fanny. So it's a yeah. fanny pack. So if, it if, means exactly what it says. In your country, in my country, a fanny is the front part of a female. Oh, the front, well, you could leave it in the front too. Yeah. So, <laughs> could, so yeah, yeah, it works out. <laughs> that, that's what little girls call their front bits, their fanny. Yeah. But, well, yeah, oh my. I, you could put it in the front as well. Yeah, so it's it's a bit of a bit of a weird one. Um, um, Dubs just said they're called bum bags. Yeah, we go kind of get a bit of crossover and call them that. There. Bum bags. I, I guess I the like question that. is, Dub, what do you call flip flops or thongs, or do you not wear them? Oh no, you I, do. I wear call them, them flip flops. Yeah, yeah. There you go. But I know what you're talking about when you say thongs. Yeah. So I, I definitely don't imagine you in a, a Varav skimpy <laughs> bit of underwear. But <laughs> I've, I've thought I'll, I'll back you off from the fanny thing as well. That yeah. is definitely for front end, not for yeah. back end. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, a weird one. Um, while we're on stereotypes and that sort of thing, um, if I wear, like if I go out to do some garden and it's a bit cold in the morning, well, I'll leave my socks on and then I'll put my thongs on. Now, that gets referred to as, as um, what are they called? Pommy slippers over here. We call those, you know, you've got your pommy slippers on. Um, is that a thing in, in the old UK, Bok? Uh, not box sorry yeah no. it, it's a, a thing that old people generally seem to do like wearing yeah. some sandals over socks yes. yeah yeah it, it's seen as a, a pretty much an old person thing here it's it's almost like a redneck thing in the u.s as well okay well that matches in i guess i'm kind of half redneck half oldie um i did have a funny thing yesterday um as people in the team know, I'm a kindergarten teacher for my real job. I often get mistakenly called dad or uncle Ben. Um, I had my first ever yesterday, granddad. One of the kids said, can you get that for me, granddad? Oh, I was oh. like, oh, ouch. <laughs> so, yeah, so there you go. Stings. Yeah, uncle Ben's is rice here too. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... A couple of last things to wrap up on. Last week I did that silly role play about TikTok Jimmy and him being interested in the NFL and NFT and seeing that beautiful big ad and jumping in. Um, have we seen any change? How's Let's check, check in on Jimmy TikTok. How's he going? He's in the upland. Jimmy TikTok is probably having a beer in his front lawn with a, a shotgun in his hand telling kids to stay off his lawn. Sounds plausible. Has he deleted Upland or is he still hanging out? What, what do you think? I don't think he even knows how to upload apps to his phone. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Jimmy. Uh, we might have to name this the <laughs> Stereotype Podcast. <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap uh, this one up uh, nice and early today unless anybody else had anything else to share. No. All right, so yeah, we're, we're still um, planning on making a play for a full NDN, but um, it's going to be hard with these these um, whole bunch of cities coming out. People are going to keep burning out their UPEX balance, so we're just going to have to play that by you. It's definitely not worth going for a node unless we have the funds ready to go. Um, there'd be nothing worse than a false start because you're just putting your UPEX into a black hole, basically. So we'll play that one by you. Other than that, Check us all out, like and subscribe, share all that good stuff and we shall catch up with you.